So a few years back, I decided to replace my existing stabilizer fish, which are made out of steel with aluminum ones. The other ones were in somewhat bad shape. Um, they're rusty. They leave rust streaks all over the deck. I wanted to just get some aluminum on there that that looks cleaner, doesn't rust, and uh, and we're a little bit lighter too. So so I took the basic dimensions off the steel ones and <clears throat> laid out my my metal and I intended to build them as a set, but I kind of wanted to test one out first and make sure that it performed as I anticipated and, and needed it to. So. Needless to say, the parts for the other one got set aside in the to-do later pile and eventually they moved from that pile into the material pile and a few years later uh, I'm ready to get back to that project and finish them. So. so this fish has performed very well over the years. I've been very happy with it. Um, I put a stainless grommet in it, in it here to prevent wear from the from the steel shackle spinning on here and cutting through the aluminum. So that's held up great. Uh, it performs, you know, just like it should. I don't have any complaints at all. Upon inspection, uh, I do have some fracturing right here from the downward pressure of the water on this plane, and. Uh, and so I'll need to kind of mitigate that problem. It's it's cracked out about an inch and a half here, but this is after several years of, of use. And so I guess maybe it doesn't really come as a surprise. So really the only problem that I've had is that it, there is some, some fracturing right here. It started with a crack in here and it's kind of fractured out here. Hasn't uh, at this point it hasn't affected the performance of this at all, but Before I put it back into service. I, I will drill these holes where each of these cracks are and And gouge out the, the crack and re-weld it and then I'll also put a, a doubler plate back over this and I'll do the same thing for the the new one I'll do it on both sides. So You can see the the white lines right there where it's fractured Took all the rough dimensions <coughs> off this existing one and then I will just replicate it on my new one. So I actually have the pieces are, are cut and ready. So all I really have to do is just get a piece of tube and split it. Cut it to the same dimensions as this one. And then I can get things lined out and start to reassemble it and then I can build some brackets for these so I can mount them on the side of my house out of the way and then they'll be up off the deck. I won't be tripping over them anymore and they're out of the way and be ready for use. So I'm just going to start by uh, cutting this piece of flat bar here. I'll drill it, uh, m measure the ID of the stainless. I think it was probably some, I don't know, maybe some half inch pipe that I used on that. Scrounge up a couple of washers, so I'll drill that, press in my piece, so we got 061, 610 thou, so yeah I'll find a little piece of pipe to go in there, and some washers, and we'll go ahead and get that cut, radius edges, drill a hole, press in the stainless sleeve and, and weld the washers on. And then we'll get our lines laid out on this and get this pipe split, get the notch cut for this, and then we can start getting it all aligned and tack welded. Yeah, so we'll just cut this with our compound miter saw, we'll splash us some WD-40. squared that end off, it's kind of beat up. Okay, eight and three quarter. Okay. 
okay we'll get our uh, center laid out for our hole get that drilled mark these corners so we can radius them then we'll find some stainless and get our insert uh, welded in okay let's get this opened up so I'm just gonna run a couple small bits through this pilot drill it and then I'll come back with the size that I need for, for my stainless pipe to go through use my die grinder to open it up a little bit more I use this for my sleeve um, so I'll just take my die grinder and just open that up a, a little bit and I'll cut this a little wider than half inch whatever the thickness of my washers is and then I can get that welded in there and this piece will be ready to go I just got a piece of half inch stainless schedule 40 pipe I'm gonna use this for my sleeve I'll, I'll put the stainless through the aluminum and then I'll weld a, a stainless washer to each side and that way is the, the shackle and the pin pivot back and forth on that stabilizer fish. It doesn't tear into the aluminum. So we'll get that pressed into the aluminum. I just want a good tight fit so, so this doesn't end up sp spinning in here and, and just cutting into the aluminum. Once this is on the boat for a while and in the water, it'll it'll corrode into place and then it'll, it'll be stuck in there forever. It won't move, but in the meantime, I just want to make sure it's in there relatively tight. So I'll just use my, my vise here and see if we'll be able to get it in there or not. Might be a little bit tight still, but we can get it in there. I'm just going to use a spacer here so I can press it through a little bit more. And I'll just trim up the excess. It's a little bit long right now. So we'll just kind of test fit one side. Just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. We'll get this edge cleaned up a little bit. Just put a slight bevel on it and uh, we'll weld that in and then we'll probably have to grind the side down a little bit with the flap disc and, and just get it prepped for the washer and weld that in and this part will be ready to go. Just got the washer welded on there. Uh, not the nicest weld job but doesn't really matter. I'm just going to flush it off. So is trying to get some decent penetration but it's really not going to go anywhere the shackle can turn smoothly on it it won't hang up so we'll just toss the device here and hit it with the flap disc be good. I'll just champ for this when I'm done welding the other side. So we'll get flipped over, uh, mark the thickness of my washer, and we'll just take off that extra material here, and then weld the other washer on. Just give that a little press again, get it in there nice and tight. Drop our other washer on there. Come in from the other side with our spacer. Now we'll just nip off the extra there. Probably with a cutting wheel and we'll weld it out. Okay guys, we'll just give this a quick chamfer and 
<laughs> this part of the assembly is finished. Okay, so next I need to split this pipe in half. <clears throat> And this tube will be welded to each side of this fin. And then we will cap the end and fill it with lead. Uh, yeah, I just threw a clamp on it here. And I'm just gonna rip it with my skill saw. Probably just cut it not quite to the end and then I'll just finish it with the grinder. Sometimes the stuff likes to squeeze shut and pinch and so. I don't want to bind the blade up. Yeah, I'll just flip her around and finish this cut. Okay, before I cut the other side, I just need to put this other stabilizer up here and just verify that I <clears throat> did cut it in half. We shall just double check it, make sure. It should be fairly accurate anyways. Looks good, so close enough. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this. It's really not that critical with these, these dimensions, so. Looks good, we'll just cut it right down the line. So this will give us the two halves of our tube, and then I think I have to put an angle on one end. The top is shorter than the bottom, so we'll get those dimensions off our other one. Then we'll uh, cut those bevels, and then start figuring out what we're gonna do to make a nose cone again. Okay, so I'll just clean up these real quick with flap disc and figure out where I need to cut this. I'll just use a miter saw for it. That looks good. We'll get these cut to length and start getting them lined up on the fin and tacked on there, I think. All right, so we got our pieces here. We're just going to get our lines laid out, get the stuff positioned intact. I'm going to take my 90 degree die grinder and just a, a 3M pad. I'll clean up my, my weld surfaces here. I'll prep it with this to knock off the oxide. I really like these. They work great. It cleans them up fast, leaves a good finish. So I'll get my lines laid out and Hit these edges real quick, get them ready to go, and we'll get these pieces in place and, and tack them. Make sure everything's positioned well, and then we'll start welding this all out. So you can see how quick that cleans up the surface of that aluminum, and it's not as abrasive as a flap disc, so it doesn't leave a bunch of scratch marks. So you can see it does a real good job of cleaning up that surface and 
taking that oxidation right off so make it nice and easy to get good penetration and get a good weld. So I'm just going to use some regular old rubbing alcohol to clean my parts with. I think it works just as good as uh, acetone. It's also a lot cheaper. A quart of this is like, I don't know, two and a half bucks. A gallon of uh, acetone is it's like $25 here, so it's a lot less uh, caustic, so. And it does a really good job cleaning parts, so. You can see how it just takes all the dirt and grease and everything right off of there. Really makes a big difference to get nice good clean metal. Especially when you're TIG welding. With all those impurities just kind of like to float right up to the top. So I just wipe it off a couple of times so I get a nice clean rag. Don't get me wrong, acetone works really good but I don't like the harsh smell of it. It's not healthy to breathe it. It's not healthy to absorb it into your skin. And this stuff is just easy to use. Alcohol still gets your metal very, very clean. And my results are just as good using it as, a, as they are with acetone. So now we can just get the center line laid out on this and then we'll uh, get our pieces positioned and, and get them tacked into place. So, uh, it really doesn't matter what's up and what's down. It looks like it's got a little bit of cup in the aluminum. Yeah, what's the other one? It's cupped a little bit up, so I think I'm gonna make this side up. Just to match the other side. And so, we'll have a short piece on this one. And, uh, He's actually, I need to still slot this, I guess, to accept my half inch flat bar to go in there. So I'll slot that off camera. Um, in the meantime, I'll just get the lines laid out here at least. So this is uh, about two and three eighths wide. So we'll go over an inch and three sixteenths on each side. and three sixteenths and then the other side will just be exactly the same and then we'll be able to position this there and then really the other thing I just need to mark where the end will be here this is going to overhang a little bit on the front and I'll just trim off the extra there but see that gets us right into place and then come back and we'll get it tacked together. So this will be the first piece I attach. And let's see, I'll probably bevel this edge a little bit. It's not gonna make too much of a difference. It'll get welded into the plate first and then this piece will get slotted and slide over it. Uh, so it will basically be like this, but this will be inset. So I'll weld it onto this plate first. I'll slide the half tube over and then weld out around it. And that way I, I get a, a super good uh, connection that way. Cause this has got an incredible amount of force pulling down on this and this is carrying the whole load. So I wanna make sure it's welded in good and it's not gonna come out like that. I got that all tacked up, welded up nice. Maybe I'm a little rusty, but <clears throat> got good penetration anyways. I got down in the toe of the, of the weld there, so pretty good. Now that we'll cut our piece of half tube and notch it, I'll do, just do that off camera, and then we'll get that position, and then we'll weld it here, also around this half inch bar, and then, uh, and we'll flip it over and we'll weld the half tube on the other side. 
and you can, I guess, work on the nose cone and weld the fin into it. Okay, guys, so I slotted this piece of half pipe and uh, prepped the weld surface, so that'll just slide in there like that. Get it squared up on our lines. Might have to just do a slight adjustment, it looks like. We'll get that tacked into place, and then this will get welded out fully around this piece of half inch flat bar. And then we can uh, get our fin positioned. We'll have to uh, knock the corner off of this because of the bead on this piece of flat bar. And it'll basically be positioned like that. And we'll get it tacked into place and welded. Before I weld that in, I'll probably get this piece of, of half pipe uh, positioned and welded on the bottom just because it'll be a little easier to clamp this to the table without that in the way. So, looks like I just need to just take a little bit off the inside of this to get it squared up and we'll tack it in place and weld it out.